Uh, what I have here is uh, it's all set up to um, graph a parabola given the focus and the directrix. Um, so I just want to kind of show you a few things and point out things that uh, you know we talk about, but if you're not watching it happen, it's it's a little unclear maybe. Um, so the uh, the vertex is actually the midpoint of the perpendicular segment from the focus to the directrix. So uh, you can clearly see that it's, it's one unit from directrix to vertex one unit from vertex to focus, we call that distance P. Um, I don't know who cho chose P, but that's what we call it. Um, now once we know the value of P, we also know that the um, length of the um, segment, or the cord actually, that passes through the focus and is parallel to the directrix, the length of that cord, so from here to here, is equal to 4P. So if I move this um, let me move the whole thing down a little bit so it's not right on that axis. Um, you can see, I'll move it over. You can see that this is two units um, in that direction, two units in that direction. That's always going to happen. That's called the focal width. So the focal width is 4p, um, which in this case is actually 4. Uh, if I move this up here, uh, maybe slide it over. Uh, now you can see that it is um, 8 because it's 4 in either direction. And also, you can see that P, the distance from uh, focus to vertex or vertex to directrix, is 2. So again, 4P. So these are the things that you have to graph when you're graphing these by hand. You have to show the directrix, show the vertex, the focus, and also the um, endpoints of what's called the lattice rectum, which is the uh, name of the cord that is parallel to the directrix and passes through the focus. Um, we can take this, it's kind of set up so that I can... Uh, move this, if I bring the focus so that it's on the other side, we, uh, it opens down. Um, if the directrix is over here, uh, so it always goes, it, it opens away from the directrix every time. Um, I can move this over here. And uh, so you can see each of the things. What's nice about GeoGebra is, I don't know if you noticed, but it was updating this equation every time. So as I change this, it's changing the equation for you. Um, you see that when I'm on integer values, I'm actually getting nice equations, or nice enough. Um, when I'm in between, I'm getting really gross equations, um, but that's okay. Um, when I tilt this, you actually see that weird xy term show up that we don't um, actually discuss in class um, because we're, we're trying to simplify things a little bit. Um, but later on, maybe in math, you'll kind of study uh, rotation of axes. Um, so that's basically what I wanted you to see, um, and uh, I hope you found this uh, kind of helpful, maybe a little enlightening. Uh, certainly, it, it definitely highlights the uh, basic things you need to graph. So there's kind of five of them, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, well, six if you count the parabola, because you should uh, graph the parabola when the directions say graph a parabola. Anyway, I hope this is uh, helpful to you.